Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come quickly, your will be done the same. Our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come quickly, your will be done the same. On it is in heaven let heaven come to earth as it is in heaven let Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come quickly, your will be done the same on earth. On earth Yeah. 
that heaven comes. This Father's Day I'm thinking about riddles. Whether it's trying to work out the punchline to that corny joke, whether it's thinking about how dads love to answer things indirectly and, and try and be funny, make a joke out of everything. Or actually whether it's thinking about a couple of dads in my family, my own dad who told me last week as we celebrate his 60th birthday how much he loves the number five. Uh, my dad who we have nicknamed in our family the count because he just loves to count things to pass the time. Or uh, my wife Rachel's uh, granddad, who sadly passed away, who we would normally always send a Father's Day card to, who loved riddles and even one time um, won a national crossword competition and got a flight on a Concorde because of it. One of his uh, big prides in life. But I'm thinking about a riddle that we come to as we journey through the Sermon on the Mount. Some words of Jesus that have flummoxed interpreters and commentators. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 starting at verse 22 that eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy your whole body will be full of light but if your eyes are unhealthy your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness how great is that darkness? Before we answer that riddle. I'd like to pose you another. What is a father? We can answer that biologically, scientifically, but if you've walked down the aisles of any supermarkets in the past week or so, you'll see that uh, culture seems to answer that question by referring to superheroes, dad reflexes, jokes and socks. Maybe you have a cultural uh, understanding of fatherhood of your own, uh, a culture of dads as overbearing or lazy, as emotionally gentle and caring or as detached or as, as, as manly and strong entirely around the barbecue. Do you, you remember your own dad as being a source of unconditional support? or of unattainable approval. I think we've all sadly seen dads in name only, men detached of emotion and responsibility to those around them. But we've also seen the example of fathers without children, men who care and guide and guard those they love. Here's a definition of fatherhood. A father is someone who treasures others over himself. Like God the Father, who calls the people of God his treasured possession, who welcomes us as daughters and as sons and looks on us according to love. Loves us by design, by default. There's a solution to the riddle in the Bible, to Jesus' words. We see the world according to our heart. The light of our perspective illuminates circumstance around us. And this isn't about just whether we see the glass as half full or empty. It's about what we treasure, about what we look upon and how we see it. I think there's, there's four ways of exploring this, exploring the way that, that who we are changes our perspective and the way that we experience things. Well, firstly, I want to acknowledge mental health. Sometimes thoughts and feelings can shape reality and those thoughts and feelings can sometimes be things that we lose control of, particularly as we go through difficulties in life. We can have a depression and anxiety and intrusive thoughts. And we can get help with 
thinking about how we can better observe, uh, observe our thoughts and emotions, that, that we are the thinker of our thoughts, the feeler of our feelings, that we can watch them come and go and, and interact with them in a different way. We can process them in a different way. As a church, we've explored this through, through mindfulness and, and a more contemplative spirituality. And we've got talks and resources on that that you can engage with. But I would like to say this Father's Day, as we think about how mental health and sadly suicide are such a common reality for a lot of men, that if you feel stuck, if coming through COVID has left you in a place of anxiety and depression, the best thing you can do is reach out and talk to someone. The most caring thing you can do for those around you, the best way that you can love and look after your children and the people that you treasure is to get help, is to speak to your GP, is to find a counsellor or, or call a helpline or reach out to us at church and we'd love to talk with you, to, to share with you where you might find more help. Do reach out, do connect with someone. There's loads of have great confidential quick services that you can access and, and try and see what help is out there. Secondly, when I think of the way that um, what is going on inside of us shapes the way that we experience what happens in life. I think of conflict. I think of the way that we judge others according to our worst assumptions about them and our best intentions for ourselves. That sometimes we have a story in our head of why people do the things they do. And we interpret every action in light of that story and our expectations for them. But sometimes I think we need to reset, to reinterpret the data, to rethink the story and to not start with our assumptions about why someone has done something, but start with observations about their actions and the impact it's had on us. And sometimes sharing that impact on us and the observable actions that we see with the person we're in conflict with can get things a little bit unstuck and, and change the situation. If you're in conflict, again, this is something we spoke about, particularly when we, we did a sermon on uh, peacemaking, and I'll put a link to that below. Again, if you want to talk through and discuss that, reach out to us. Reach out through community at mhechurch.com. Turn up at the cafe in the weekend, grab one of us, and we'd love to talk through and journey through that with you. But thirdly... Um, there's actually a very obvious explanation for this passage and it maddens me a little that some commentators and theologians, maybe it's just the one I've, ones that I've read, seem to miss the wood for the trees. <laughs> because this verse, this riddle about eyes and seeing and illumination is wedged between two passages about money. One that we looked at with Anthony last week and this famous saying of Jesus, Matthew chapter six, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Again, I think it's probably appropriate on Father's Day to think about money. A lot of us have dads who we remember as being either generous, or spendthrift. Sometimes a combination of the two, sometimes generous with others and refusing to ever spend money on themselves. And it's good to buy presents for, for dads and at our in-person service, we're gonna give out gifts to all the men. Again, I don't think this is a verse, unlike the earlier riddle, that needs that much interpretation. God is a God of grace and generosity. And you cannot worship a God of grace and generosity and live a life of greed. Your spending history betrays your values. You cannot make life decisions solely based on money and fully reflect 
the character and heart of a God who gave away everything he had, he had for love, gave away his precious son for treasure, for us. And actually, I think in that, Anthony picked up a couple of things last week in his talk, both scarcity and squander are sinful. Actually, refusing to spend any money and be generous or wasting money and just spending it and chasing after it and enjoying it as a pleasure, both miss the meaning of, of the goodness of the gifts that God has given us. Maybe there's a father today that needs to hear that, that needs to go and give away some money or find pleasure in something other than something material. But today, lastly, on Father's Day, I don't want to talk about mental health and conflict and money, even though I just did. I want to ask whether the way that we see the world is shaped by our inner dad. I wonder if you had a dad who only ever saw good or a dad who only ever seemed to see bad, see faults and flaws. I wonder if you had a dad who avoided any sort of conflict whatsoever, who was afraid to raise his voice or challenge. Or if you had a dad who saw his role as a disciplinarian, as who acted out as an aggressive dominant figure. I wonder where your dad was on that scale. I wonder if at times he was both sides. Sometimes the inner voice that we have from our dad can shape us to be someone who is shaped by perfectionism on the one hand or by striving for approval on the other. Perfectionism is when we define ourselves entirely by what we do and the standards that they are at. But approval is when we define ourselves entirely by what others do to us. If we see the world by perfectionism or desire for approval, it's like seeing the world according to one of those black lights that shows up all the dirt and invisible stains. This Father's Day, I want to tell you a simple truth. Your Heavenly Father doesn't define you by doing. He doesn't define you by what you do or what others do to you. He defines you by identity. And I think there are three truths in the Bible that come from having <clears throat> a God who is a Heavenly Father. First of all, you are enough. You are enough. God purposed you and made you. He loves you. You are enough. God saw you as of such great value. He treasured you so much that he gave his son to bring you freedom and life and closer to him. You are enough. Who you are is enough. You don't need to be anyone else. You are enough. Secondly, you do enough. There are no actions you could ever do that could fully win the approval of everyone or reach the heights of perfection. You do enough. You can't push any more or any harder. In our North London culture in particular, we are just surrounded by a frenetic pace of, of constant addition, of adding more and more things in. And all we do is feel guilty that we don't do enough at work, that we don't spend enough time with those around us, that we don't do enough on our hobbies, that we don't attain to the things that we want to do in life enough. We always want to do more and more and more. And I want to tell you that life is about more than doing. It's also about being and enjoying. You do enough. Maybe there's some things that you need to stop. You're probably doing too much. 
And thirdly, you have enough. You are not defined by your lack. No one looks at you and projects onto you all the things that you don't have. And your heavenly father does not see it that way because he has given you his son. And God says, I would be your portion. I would be your satisfaction. I would be what you need. You, do, you can find love and healing and belonging and wholeness in me. You are enough. You do enough. You have enough. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I was listening to a podcast this week and um, the speaker was sharing about um, a learning difficulty she'd had growing up. And after she was diagnosed, her father took her to one side and said, we as a family, we will no longer look at your grades because they are not a measure of who you are. All we will ever ask of you is, did you try your best? And this uh, writer found that so freeing and liberating and, and set them up for life. And I wonder if we have set ourselves unfair examinations that God, our Heavenly Father, would not judge us by. Whether we are looking to the report card and God is looking to the heart. It's even simpler with God. God doesn't say, did you strive enough? God says, did you trust? God says, love is not bought or earned or the result of a promotion. It is graced to us in Jesus. God, your heavenly father, loves you with an inescapable love. The voice of our heavenly father is not a critic or a condemnation, but in Zephaniah, it tells us that the voice of our heavenly father is one that delights over us with singing. He supplies that which we lack. And just calls us to trust him. He says we are of such great value that he would give his son for us. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. He restores us to who he made us. This Father's Day, may you hear the love song of your heavenly Father and find rest and peace in him. Amen. The words of Christ has down from generation The Son of God teaching us to pray Echoed words, Father, have your will, your way in me. Completely, we wholly trust your faithful in provision. Amazing grace, forgiveness for our sin. We forgive the way that you've forgiven us, oh Lord, so we can sing our Father, hallowed be your name, forever our God be exalted, your King them come and in us let your will be done our father lead us, from, lead us from the valley of temptation deliver us from the evil one lord you reign here we stand
stand victorious in your name. Together we pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Forever our God, be exalted. Your kingdom come and in us let your will be done how father you're the kingdom your is the kingdom and power and glory god of authority ancient of days Lord is the wisdom and honor forever and always and always. Lord is the kingdom, the power and glory, God of the sovereignty ancient of days. Lord is the Bye. Uh...